Did you know there's a soda that hit American taste buds exactly one year before Coca-Cola? That soda is Dr. Pepper, one of the oldest names in American soft drinks. The kind that's been around since the US was still figuring out what cool even tasted like. And what makes it stand out isn't just the brand, it's the flavor. A layered, complicated recipe that makes one sip feel like a whole orchestra warming up on your tongue. Inside the factory, it all starts with massive steel tanks, where water is treated and prepped for mixing. Next comes the most critical step, building the flavor base and blending everything in exact proportions. Once the mix hits the right specs, it's sent through the system to be chilled, then injected with CO2 for carbonation before blasting into high-speed filling lines. And in just a few minutes, bottles and cans of Dr. Pepper roll off the line, going from a mysterious formula to something you crack open and hear that like history itself tapping you on the shoulder and saying, go on, take a sip. Dr. Pepper's story actually starts in 1885, back when pharmacies and soda fountains basically came as a package deal. Pharmacists would use flavored syrups to mask the bitterness of tonics, making them easier to drink and a lot more likely to bring customers back. At Morrison's Old Corner Drugstore, Charles Alderton looked at the shelves lined with syrup bottles in every flavor and thought. Instead of mixing something just to hide medicine, why not create something completely new? So he started experimenting, blending the flavors he already had in the shop, then pouring samples for customers to try. And people genuinely loved it, loved it so much that this just-for-fun experiment quickly became an official soda. Early on, it was even treated like a health drink, in the very old-school way people thought about tonics back then. The soda craze spread so fast that customers didn't want to drink only at the counter anymore. They wanted to take it home in bottles, and that demand helped push the entire soft drink industry into a new era. Today, the U.S. drinks an enormous amount of soda, nearly 12 billion gallons a year. And what about the name Dr. Pepper? Nobody can pin down one definitive answer, but the most popular legend says Alderton named it after the father of a girl he once had a crush on. And the irony is, this doctor ended up making countless other people fall in love too, thanks to that signature flavor that lives on in Dr. Pepper's famous 23 Flavors story. What makes Dr. Pepper hard to pin down but impossible to forget comes down to one famous secret. A blend of 23 flavors kept under lock and key in a safe. In 2005, Dr. Pepper scientists were reportedly allowed to open the safe to update the flavor for a berries and cream variation. Inside the factory, those 23 flavors go by a much more technical name, the beverage concentrate, the product's condensed flavor base. It's guarded so tightly that even the exact production location isn't publicly disclosed. From that concentrate, Dr. Pepper builds its signature taste and keeps it consistent from batch to batch, can to can, bottle to bottle, keeping the real formula just out of reach for anyone curious enough to chase it. Now, with that secret formula hidden somewhere behind security as thick as a bank vault wall, let's step inside a small factory in Texas and see how each bottle of Dr. Pepper is brought to life. Right in the town, people like to joke is Dr. Pepper, Texas. Even though each version can vary a bit in ingredients, they all share one core, water, which makes up about 90% of the recipe. The water is sourced locally, run through a treatment system to meet quality standards, then pumped into massive red holding tanks, each one storing around 10,000 gallons, ready to feed the entire line. From there, it's sent to the syrup blending area, flowing into mixing tanks that hold about 300 gallons per batch. The blending process starts when high fructose corn syrup and citric acid are mixed with water to build that signature sweet and tangy base. Next, the thick, concentrated flavor base is added in two separate parts. The first carries the secret extract, and the second comes in a five-gallon container holding preservatives and caffeine. At this stage, Dr. Pepper syrup and treated water are blended at a five-to-one ratio, meaning five parts water to one part syrup with the water chilled to about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 
so everything mixes smoothly and stays stable. Once the syrup is diluted to the exact ratio, the system precisely adds the remaining ingredients like coloring, ultra-concentrated sweeteners, and any flavor variations like berries and cream, depending on which product run is on the line. At Dr. Pepper, the formula isn't just one straight line. It splits into four main families. Classic, flavor-added versions, low or zero sugar versions, and seasonal limited editions. Each family is its own mix, and the line adjusts ratios, ingredients, and blending order to deliver that taste you recognize instantly from the very first sip. Next, the blended syrup is pushed into a CO2 chilling and saturation unit called a carbo cooler, where it meets its fizzy best friend, carbon dioxide. Here, the system drops the temperature of the mixture while injecting CO2 at carefully controlled pressure and flow so the gas dissolves evenly into the drink. That's what creates the exact carbonation level and delivers that familiar the instant you twist a cap or crack open a can. Before a glass bottle can be filled with Dr. Pepper, it has to be clean. These bottles arrive at the plant first, so the very first step is a rinse and wash system. The bottles are flipped upside down and blasted with a hot alkaline solution for a heavy-duty sanitizing wash, then rotated upright again, drained of the rinse, and sent toward the filling line. By then, the carbonated Dr. Pepper flows straight into a 60-head filler running at about 500 bottles per minute, filling fast, smooth, and precise to keep the carbonation from escaping mid-process. After filling, the line moves the bottles through a gradual warm-up stage, bringing them closer to room temperature to prevent condensation and sweating once they reach packaging. Next, a tin-plated steel crown cap is placed on each bottle, and the capper crimps it tightly around the neck like a sealed lock. Finally, once the bottles are temperature-stable, they're grouped, loaded into cases, and ready to leave the factory and head out to stores. With aluminum cans, the pace gets even more intense. The can filling line can run up to 1,500 cans per minute, and on an average day, the plant turns out around 1.4 million cans of Dr. Pepper. The moment each can is filled, it shoots straight into the seamer, where the pull tab lid is set on top and crimped onto the rim in one precise lock, tight enough to keep the CO2 sealed inside until you crack it open. From there, the sealed cans move into secondary packaging, where they're bundled into multi-packs packed into cases, stacked on pallets, and shipped out from the plant to spread everywhere. So whether you're holding a can or a bottle, you're still taking a sip of fizzy American history. And honestly, with Dr. Pepper, it really does feel like whatever the medicine is, it's gotta be exactly the doctor's order. On another line, the story continues with plastic bottles. Just like glass, the plastic bottles are prepped and fed onto the filling conveyor, where they're filled fast and to an exact volume. Right after that, the caps slide down a chute and compressed air helps guide each one into position. Then the capping machine twists the cap down tight onto the bottle mouth. This step is critical. Even a slightly loose cap can let carbonation leak out, so the capper constantly monitors and controls the torque to make sure every bottle is sealed shut. Once capped, the bottles go through checks to confirm the CO2 level is correct and that the plastic bottle can handle the internal pressure. After that, workers do a taste test to make sure the flavor is on target. Then the bottles keep moving into the case packing area and are wrapped in shrink film to lock each multi-pack in place for shipping. The shrink wrap helps the bottles stay upright and reduces shifting and impact during long hauls. In the final step, a robotic palletizer takes over stacking the cases layer by layer onto pallets in a programmed pattern, then moving the full pallets into storage, where they wait for trucks to pick them up and haul them out to market. Once everything's stacked and ready to go, it rolls out to distribution centers, carrying Dr. Pepper to picnics and parties all around you. And just like that, your favorite fizzy drink is officially on its way. If you enjoyed this little break-in to the Dr. Pepper factory, hit like and subscribe to Food Tech today so you don't miss the next production process. See you in the next episode.